I'm going to talk to you about social media's influence on a topic you may not think much about, hair. Social media has become a way for people to connect with each other for over a decade, and the natural hair movement is no exception. To help you understand the reach of social media, here are some hashtags that arose from the creation of the natural hair movement. Natural hair video was used over 1.3 thousand times, kinky chicks was used over a million times, and naturally she's dope was used over 1.3 million times. The staggering number of times black women have utilized social media as a method for communication led me to question, how has American culture, including mainstream media and social media, impacted African American women's willingness to participate in the natural hair movement? I have chosen to look at four different perspectives relating to this topic. First, the origins of negative body image, how generational norms have impacted natural hair acceptance, the complicated relationship between natural hair and mainstream media, and I will be looking at the growing relationship between social media and natural hair. To begin, I will, to begin, I will assess where negative body image originates in the black community. At the beginning of the slave trade, heads were shaved. Whitney Bellinger from the University of Pittsburgh published in Sociological Viewpoints that slavers collected on average 300 slaves at a time and every slave's head was shaved. While there isn't definitive proof that this was done to undermine the identity of Africans, there's no denial that shaving heads was the beginning of the end in regards to body image in the black community. As time passed, there seemed to be nothing done to remedy the confidence pocketed away by the slave trade. Brenda Randall, professor of media and communication at Arkansas State University, claims that African hair was deemed unattractive and inferior by Europeans. This classification of black hair led to words like wool and nappy to be the go-to words to describe black hair. Additionally, Dr. King writes in his letter from Birmingham jail that as a result of long years of oppression, black Americans are so drained of self-respect and a sense of somebodyness that they have adjusted to segregation. This adverse body image and low morale described by Dr. King manifested when white Americans began using degrading words, comparing women's bodies to animals and diapers. From then on, women began thinking they are less than, and many women of color began to do anything they could to alter their appearance. Next, I will address an equally important topic related to the natural hair movement, the generational norms that impact natural hair acceptance. During the Civil Rights Movement, many African Americans began to score Afros as a political <coughs> However, Cameron Jackson, an undergrad researcher at Elon University, wrote, many were harshly criticized by older, more conservative blacks. While many young were feeling liberated, <coughs> older black women kept the mindset that expressing blackness wouldn't bring positivity and could easily attract negative attention. However, the conservative ideals of the Civil Rights era are in the past, and today, millennial black youth are starting a new wave of confident women who aren't afraid to embrace their hair. <coughs> in the article, YouTube Communities and the Promotion of Natural Hair Acceptance, Jackson states, now many members of the millennial generation of black women are working to reshape the misconceptions that have been made about black hair. Another important question to ask ourselves is, despite our knowledge that the natural hair movement is supported and growing, why aren't we seeing black women wearing their natural hair in mainstream media? This leads me to explore the complicated relationship between black female characters in prime time TV. <coughs> we have all seen commercials for the hit TV shows How to Get Away with Murder, Scandal, and Being Mary Jane. We have also fallen in love with the strong black women leading these shows. But the troubling thing is we aren't truly seeing the women we idolize. What we're actually seeing is a socially acceptable version of Viola Davis, Gabrielle Union, and Kerry Washington. According to NBC News, despite the trend towards natural hair, it is rarely worn by characters on TV, and even actresses who have natural hair rarely get to show it on air. This sends the message that, express, that truly expressing blackness isn't something for television, and natural hair could turn away majority viewers. Also, many actresses choose to remain neutral on television. Though natural hair shouldn't have to be toned down, it unfortunately is. In the same article, Michaela Angela Davis states, I believe actresses still think natural hair means you're making a statement or can only play something political. The want for neutrality could be attributed to an actress wanting to be seen in any role. On the other hand, some actresses are widely celebrated for their natural hair. Stars like Lupita Nyong'o and Tracy Ellis Ross are rarely seen on screen without natural hair. While these stars are Hollywood anomalies, we need more actresses and TV producers to see the importance of showing what black women actually look like before they lose millennial black viewers who cannot relate to the strong women they see on TV. The 
last part of the natural hair movement I will examine is the growing relationship between black women with natural hair and social media. In a paper called Bloggers, Bloggers, and Virtual Sorority, written by Tamika Ellington of Kent State University, the media sites servicing the natural hair community include YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and various forums, including blogs. You, um, the plethora of media sites available to black women beginning their journey makes this transition easier. Though social media can be used in negative ways, black women are using these media sites to uplift one another. And there is no doubt that the main media site of the natural hair movement is YouTube. In YouTube communities and the promotion of natural hair acceptance among black women, Cameron Jackson claims YouTube has a unique ability to provide information about black hair due to its parasocial nature. Parasocial nature is defined as the perceived appearance of face-to-face -face interaction. This allows viewers to watch a variety of videos on how to care for and style their hair easily because they feel as though they're being taught firsthand. Edward Kessler also asserts that the, the idea that social media provides groups of people who might not otherwise meet the opportunity to converse and recognize what they have in common. This rings true for the natural hair movement. The widespread connection and inspiration social media, social media sites offer women participating in this movement continually grows. YouTube is teaching women hair care tips they never had a chance to learn, and Twitter and Facebook allow women of color to share their hair journeys with the world. When resolving this topic, I have, cho I have many things come to mind. I have chosen three things that I believe to be true about the natural hair movement. First, the natural hair movement is happening and growing. Second, social media is facilitating this movement's growth. And primetime TV needs to begin showing natural hair before they lose millennial black viewers. Looking at how far black women have come and the confidence gained from the natural hair movement, I've concluded that this movement has had a positive impact on black women's sense of self. The original natural hair movement of the civil rights era was seen as a rebellion and held a negative connotation. Today, young black women are utilizing the power of social media to communicate and share their story, reclaim negative words used against them, and promote body positivity. Although everyone has a different hair journey, all women should have the courage to show their true self and never tone down their hair because not only is it a reflection of the beauty that black women hold, it is an emblem of cultural pride. <laughs> okay, so saying, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process, and did it cause you to go in a different direction than you originally planned? My research question evolved to be something much more specific relating to American culture. I began looking at just the natural hair movement in general, and as I was looking at different sources, I found that a lot more had to do with media and how black women were utilizing social media, so I decided to incorporate that into my presentation. Good. Um, and, uh, let's see, oh, what additional questions emerged from your research? An additional question that emerged from my research was how other black people and other people in the black community think about natural hair. There's a big, um, conflict between good hair and bad hair. So even though people are judged outside of the black community, people are also judged within the black community on their hair type and texture. Very good, thank you.